Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at why Motor's Artisan Table unlocks most of the game. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you how every single boss in the game except Motor is skippable. But first, let's get into Motor's Artisan Table. How do you make it and why is it so important? Once you've progressed through a substantial chunk of the game, you'll get to the mountains, and you'll be ready to face Motor. Motor is one of the coolest bosses in Valheim. I know everybody has their preferences, but this dragon is just so badass. I mean, look at her! She's also one of the most rewarding bosses in Valheim to actually kill. With two of those dragon tears and only 10 wood, boom, you'll be able to make the Artisan Table. The main purpose of the Artisan Table is to enable you to create things like the Blast Furnace, which enable you to make black metal bars used for most of the objects you see here and almost all endgame weapons. Like some of the other tables, you can actually build some stuff on the artisan table. You'll be able to build mechanical springs, and this is gonna be necessary to make these traps and also the ballista you see over there. And then in addition to that, you can make all of the missiles for the ballista. So most people don't use the artisan table to make much, but they will be using the artisan table to enable all this other stuff. This is really what makes the artisan table so useful. So let's cover it. The Blast Furnace is arguably the most important item that the Artisan Table enables, because this furnace allows you to smelt all of that black metal ore that you've undoubtedly stockpiled by this point. Because once you have black metal bars, that enables most of the Mislin's progression. Once you have black metal, you'll be able to make the Galder Table, which is how you make all of the magic items in Valheim. You'll also need black metal in order to make a refinery, which is how you get the refined eater to make all of the endgame Mislin's tier weapons. Additionally, you'll also need black metal in order to make these sap extractors. The black metal will also allow you to make this ballista. You'll also be able to arm these kind of bear traps or troll traps using black metal and the mechanical springs from the artisan table. But it's not just Mislin stuff. The artisan table is also necessary to make a lot of the planes gear. This enables you to turn the flax into linen thread, which is used in most planes armor and some of the weapons. And then this windmill here is how you make bread and a few of the other really good items from the planes tier. And now that you see all of these items you can build, surely you understand why motor is so important. She is the gatekeeper to almost every endgame item except for a Krom and the Arbalest. But what about what I said earlier in the video about how technically Motor's the only boss you need to kill? Well, let me show you. You see, normally you need to get this big guy so that you can unlock the pickaxe to even be able to mine in the first place. But alternatively, you can actually just use a troll. There you go. It might take some time and you might die but eventually, he'll break through the copper, and you've successfully skipped the first boss. And then we have the second boss, the Elder, who normally drops a key. The key allows you to get into these crypts and harvest iron. But technically, all you need is 10 wood to make a workbench, and then 4 fine wood to make a chair. Look at the lock for the gate, and then place the chair right underneath the lock, sort of at an angle, just like that. And then you should just be able to get in the chair and get right into the crypt. And that's how you can skip the second boss. You can get iron without ever killing the elder. Normally, you have to then kill the third boss, Bone Mass, in order to get silver from the mountains. But technically, you don't need that. In fact, all you need to do is find a really big mountain. And when I say really big, I mean it. You have to find some of the biggest mountains in the map Mountains that are like two or three mountains put together. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. You're gonna need to either use the Stag Breaker or the Iron Sledge. Probably just use the Stag Breaker because they work the same. Don't just go using the Stag Breaker on random spots because you're never gonna find anything. You need to scope the right place out. So this is very promising. Why? Well, it's really high and there's sort of a flat-ish area. Silver nodes don't really spawn in like the edge of a mountain. So you wanna kind of just keep looking around 
and just keep doing this on the areas where you can see the snow. Oh! And eventually you'll find... See that too hard area? That means that the silver node is down there. So now all we have to do is mine down, and there we have it. Here's our silver found without a wishbone. This method is much more manageable if you scout out the right kind of area first. See what I'm saying? You want these flat areas high up on the mountain, maybe even on the very top of the mountain. This kind of stuff though, for example, don't bother with. There's no silver here. The elevation is too steep. You need to look in areas like this. See all this flat terrain there? That'd be a great spot to use the stag breaker and try and find some silver. However, as far as motor goes, the fourth boss, there's no way to skip her as far as I know because you must get black metal. You need six black metal bars in order to make a lot of the mistlin stuff in the first place. So you gotta kill motor. Yglyth, however, you can skip. You see, normally Yglyth gives you an item that allows you to clear this mist. And it all has to do with exploration because yeah, this looks unexplorable. But what about that? Oh, wait a second, there's a whole corridor here right through the mist. That doesn't need any kind of clearing, does it? And also, you'll notice that how you use the camera has a lot to do with how obtrusive the mist is. I can't even see my character, but if I zoom all the way in... Oh, well now I can see what's in front of me, and if I move around, I can actually see the ground a little bit near where I am. Don't get me wrong, the visibility is low, but it's way better than this. So using first person, and also your situational awareness, you'll be able to find and explore areas in the Mistlands. What you've seen so far was just a tiny glimpse of some of the Mistlands treats. If you really find the great spots, you can find whole clearings, entire Mistlands biomes that are mostly clear of mist. And if you're lucky and you explore along the coastlines, you'll even find the spawn structures. Just keep exploring the Mistlands coasts and eventually you'll find some really beautiful clearings. You'll find areas like this. Think about building a base on one of these islands. You could spawn proof it and be safe from raids and be in the Mistlands. And someday, hopefully someday soon, I'll be able to make content about that smoky area off in the distance. If you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server. And comment below if there's anything you'd like me to make a video about. I'll see you next time. Bye!